how do you build a wall around your business? We've said this a million times. A house does not care what it's worth, does that? Nope. And we kind of stole this from David Phelps. Oh yeah, we stole a lot of stuff from David um, Phelps. He's a smart right. man. <laughs> and, and it's true, uh, it, it's all about the cash flow. Mm -hmm. The house does not care what it's worth in any market. As long as you're getting the cash flow, it doesn't matter whether the values are going up or going down. The values go up, cherry on the top. That's right. And I love that he used that term, it's the cherry on the top, because a lot of people who have been doing business especially over these past few years, have been operating based on the cherry on top. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't run a successful, sustainable business like that. That's speculation. That's right. It's not investing. That's exactly right. So we have one here twice and I'm trying to figure out why, but one is the cash flow, um, rent Because one options. is important. <laughs> it's, a, it's a one, one, one. <laughs> Cash flow, rent options, you gotta maximize the profits in the house that you're dealing in or apartment or commercial building or whatever it is that you're doing, that it's all about the cash flow. And, and what are the different options you have that you can rent a property with? You know, what's the term gonna be? You've, you know, nowadays you've got uh, Airbnbs, you've got the short-term, mid-term, long-term rentals, 13-week nursing, all kinds of, of options out there to be able to maximize your pro profit. And you know, I will tell you that I, I'm in short-term rentals. You, you own a couple with me as well. I love the short-term rentals. I'd really rather have a midterm rental. They're my favorite. However, when I'm buying a property with the thought process of turning that into a short-term or even a midterm, I don't buy the house based on the, the, that income. Right. I never make the decision based on that income. The decision is always based on in a long-term situation, will that house cash flow or at least break even? You always have to have the additional exit strategies. Um, you never want to pigeonhole yourself or put yourself in a corner. That's right. Because when markets change, it's very difficult to pivot if you only have one source of business. That's exactly right. And I know a lot of people are hung up on having everything they have paid for. You know, that's a great Dave Ramsey way of doing things. Sure. And you know, there's nothing wrong with it for sure. If, you know, if you can do that, that's great. But However, what are you living on? What are you leaving on the table? Right? Well, not just that again, how, how do you pivot? That's right. If you need cash, where are you going to get it? You have to sell the house to get cash. That's right. And, as we know, hard assets uh, are more difficult to sell than uh, paper. That's right. So what happens then? Then you have to discount it a lot. That's right. To sell it quickly. So you need to really have some leverage on your property. And remember, it's a business exp expense. There's tax deductions that come along with that. So, so Uncle Sam can actually help you pay when you are making payments on something. Yep. Now, my personal house that I live in, absolutely, I want that thing paid for. Um, I want to have a line of credit against it as well so I can use it when I need to. But for all of my business stuff, I like having a little bit of leverage. Where do I like to see that sitting? No more than 70%. This is my ooh, ooh, ooh part. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm glad you touched on that line of credit. Uh, now is a great time, even if you don't need the money, to yes. go ahead and take it out and put it in the bank. Especially if you don't need the money. Because uh, what happens when credit markets tighten up? They pull back on their lines of credit. Yes. And if you don't have one and they pull it, or you have one but you haven't used it, yeah. they can pull it back. But if you've already taken the money and put it in the bank, they're not going to go in there and take it back out. That's exactly <laughs> right. I've, I've had a line of credit that, uh, you know, I'd use it, I'd pay it off, I'd use it, I'd pay it off. Um, at one point I used it, I paid it down a little bit and they started shrinking the line to equal whatever I had paid down. Right. So I couldn't take out any more. Right. Um, that all of course happened back in the, the 08 time frame. but sure. you know, they, they'll do it now again. So, so just remember that. And, and keep in mind, we're not advocating you, um, take all your equity out. That's right. If you're at 75% and less in most markets, mm -hmm. you're going to be safe. I mean, there were markets in 08 where 
values drop below 75%, but that was few and far between. Right. Uh, you're typically going to be safe at 75, but if you want to be even more cautious, just keep it at 70. But you should always look at your portfolios and see where you have uh, equity that's available. And you utilize that. I mean, you're missing out on deals that you could pay for cash. That's um, exactly right.